These are the stories. There is a foundation out there that helps you get back into it. Of organizations making a difference. What really limits our ability to do something is people's imagination. And empowering others across Canada. When I get into that sledge, I'm free, man. I'm playing hockey. It's a great organization and it's worth supporting. In our community. My name is Ali Bennett and I'm here to play sledge hockey. My name is Trevor and I'm a black belt in Taekwondo. My name is Neil and I'm here playing my annual wheelchair floor hockey. I'm my is Brittany, I swim to here today. The Paralympic Sports Association, known as the PSA in Edmonton, Alberta, has been running for over five decades, adding more sports to their list as time went on. On Tuesday nights, kids from 5 to 14 gather at the Meadows Community Recreation Centre to learn one of Canada's favourite pastimes. My name is Michael and I'm here to play sledge hockey. My favourite part of sledge hockey is puck handling and skating around. My name is Caleb, and my favorite part of, about hockey is scoring goals. I love the games, I love the practices. So right now I'm putting on my equipment before we're gonna go on the ice, like on our sledges. It's a sport that it doesn't matter what your ability level is, you sit in a sledge and you're able to go out and have fun on the ice. A lot of them pick it up pretty quick. They want to get moving, they want to go chase that puck. You can do it, Abraham. Do you guys want to play that one more time? Yes. Is that a yes for everyone? Yes. One more? All right, grab a puck, stay in the blue line. Danielle Schmidt has been coaching sledge hockey for five years. It's a wonderful place for the kids to get together because when they're at school, they might be the only one with a disability or the one of few with a disability. So when they come here, they see everyone else who has similar challenges and they all get to go out on the ice and have fun together. Rosalind McKenzie has been playing sledge hockey for three years. They've got half of the hockey stick, only that they're a little bit shorter and um, there's, um, they're wrapped in some sort of tape. Some are all around, but most of them are just near near the um, end of the middle and all the way up. And there's like kind of, kind of like sharp picks so that you can you can grab so that so that your sticks can grab at the ice. Both of them have that same pick, and then you pick into the ice. That's what's going to dig and grip, and then you're going to pull through, and then that's how you're moving. So you dig pull through and that's how you get your momentum going. Yeah. So remember, off your heel to your toe, follow through, laser pointer. Oh, that was close. Both of Russell Bennett's kids play for the PSA sledge hockey team. My son has been in sledge hockey since grade one. Caleb was born with spina bifida, so he doesn't have the use of his legs. And the first sport that was accessible for Caleb was sledge hockey. Soon as he was part of a team, and it's like that for some of the other players. When they're part of a team, it's like they're so excited. They're just, it's something that is, I guess, for them, they're part of a team. It's not often they get to be part of something, so it's everything for him. In one of our conversations as a family, it was like, well, Ali, why don't you join? And I think it, <laughs> It was just, it was very nice of Caleb's sister to say, yeah, I'm gonna come and help you guys out. So part of it came about is because Calgary has really encouraged that. They get a huge turnout compared to us because a lot of their brothers and sisters play along with their, their, uh, their brother or sister who might be disabled. So Allie decided she was gonna do the same. So she has been playing for the last three years. This is her last year because she turns 14, but she, I think it's just been a great experience for her. It's a great sport. I mean, for able-bodied people as, as well as obviously handicapped people, but the, I think the camaraderie and also that she's kind of there with her brother has been a really nice addition for us and our family and that whole thing. My name is Ali Bennett and I'm here to play sledge hockey. Not a lot of people get to experience this sport or they don't even know it exists. And yet here I am, I'm having lo loads of fun. I'm here with 
like my little brother and I'm here with friends. Sometimes it's hard for him to fit in because his friends want to go play in the park, for example, but he can't go there or he wants to do activities like everyone else, but he can't. So for him, sledge hockey is really important because it shows him and everyone else that he can fit in and he can do what everyone else can do. My name is Jake and I was born with Spina Bifida. I've been playing hockey for, for five seasons. It's my favorite sport because it's kind of the only sport I have that I could play with other my friends and because they all are in wheelchairs. My favorite part is shooting on goal and getting the goal. So for shooting. Where do we want the puck on our stick? Teddy and Jake. Where do you start it? At your heel. You're gonna start the puck at your heel. And you're gonna roll it back and forth. And eventually you want the puck to go from heel to toe. And you're gonna follow through where you're shooting at. Okay. Rosalind's dad, Dwight, decided to join in the fun. Why do I volunteer is because my daughter is in this and she enjoys it. so. What a great opportunity to have a father-daughter bonding time is to be a coach. It is amazing to show that uh, there's more than just stand up. Like there's more variety for the kids in wheelchairs and with other disabilities that they aren't limited in what they can do. And it's, it's amazing that there's programs like this to show that they can do whatever they would desire to do. Jake and Ethan, you guys are on the boards. Teddy and Ben, we're moving to the net, okay? So head over to the net. Okay, so we're aiming for those pylons, okay? Because typically the goalie is taking up the center part of the net and the corners are usually the most open parts to shoot on. Thank goodness for the PSA. They're well organized. They, uh, they book the ice times. They book uh, summer camps for him. And, but because of this, I mean, this is his only sport he has right now. It was one of the sports he could get involved in right away. It's a huge need in our community. Oh, I think it's wonderful because these kids, like, they wouldn't be able to play stand-up team. They don't have the ability to skate. So being in a sledge gives them so much more opportunity to, it doesn't matter what their ability level is or what their disability is. They get out on the ice and they can move around because their arms are still working and they have a blast. All right, blades on three. One, two, three. Good job, guys. All right, let's hop off the ice. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. My name is Jordy Sinclair. We're at the downtown YMCA. My daughter is uh, involved in the PSA for swimming. So she's an intermediate swimmer and she's just having a blast. I'm Ice Brittany, I swim to here today. It's been really fun to swim with the PSA sports. Exactly, like that, like that. Okay. Now try it on your own and keep it back. All the way. Which ones are going to be? Yeah. All right, do you want to try it now? I give a bicycle front kick and dolphin kick and a bicycle kick. <laughs> That's easy. Huh? It's easy, it's easy. I know, because we're not doing it, we're not doing it with any resistance. My favorite one's buffet one, because it's just move your arms around. So yeah. Brittany, she's fairly high functioning and she just loves just loves to be with people. Uh, doesn't matter if they're severely handicapped to what we what I guess everyone would call normal. She just loves to be a part of it and just socializing with them. So this this is working out great for her. She's made a lot of friends here. One of the things that I really like with PSA 
is even though Brittany doesn't have cerebral palsy or anything like that, uh, they still allow people to come in of any ability, which to me is awesome. And that's one of the reasons why we support the PSA. If you want to see um, unrestricted love, if you want to see the true definition of love, you just hang around these kids and you'll see just how genuine they are. And that's something, you know, as a parent, that you're always concerned of how your daughter is going to be taken care of. Here, you've got no words. Uh, everyone is very open, very friendly, and you see a genuine love. It's, it's great. Both hands, both hands, I will let go, I promise. There we go. Josie Salmon is one of the program instructors. So I've been volunteering for about three and a half years now, and I always keep coming back because we get to know the participants. Um, we get to really have a good feel for what they want to do in swim classes. I teach swimming for my job, um, and I find this to be so much fun as a kind of change from that more rigid structured environment we get to hang out with them we get to do more games more fun things and really just work on what the participant wants to work on so we do a lot of goal setting and working towards those goals and we just do whatever we can to help our participants swim whatever that means for them so we're going in and some of our kids are using the aqua belts that I used to teach all of the other kids that I teach on swimming lesson days and some of the kids are using goggles because they don't want to go under the water without them which is totally fine and then we have other participants who use chairs to get into the water or that need to be held the whole time and we still are working on like stretching out our arms or using our feet to move through the water and especially with breathing we try and do bubbles all the time so that if our kids ever go under the water they know that they're breathing out and our adults as well I know it's a hard one for them especially learning from an older age to just relax in the water breathing out um, but we do everything we use all of our aids and floaties and toys to help with that so we really want them to get to a point where they're comfortable and independent in the water and our older adults as well fitness is completely a huge part of aging and coming to the pool and working out and having that routine is really awesome for them. Jacqueline Jetty participates in many of the Paralympic Sports Association programs PSA for five years. This is, this is actually my first week out. I'm a little rusty. My swimming instructor is very patient and he's taught me a lot. And I enjoy the second reason I enjoy it so much is it helps me with in Instead of physiotherapy, you don't really think you're having physiotherapy because things in the water, I can do things in the water that I can't do on land. It feels like when I'm in my chairs versus when I'm in the water, I don't, when I'm in the water or even in a kayak, like, like I'm, PSA also does kayaking, so when I'm in the swimming pool or kayaking, I don't have a disability as much. Being in the water and on a kayak, I'm not disabled, but most of the society, when they see you in a chair, they automatically think you're disabled, but when I'm in the water, you wouldn't be able to tell. If we had had programs like this when I was younger, it would have been a lot easier. On Edmonton's south side, the Paralympic Sports Association also runs an adaptive taekwondo class that is made to meet the needs of all its participants. My name is Corey and I've been doing taekwondo here at Tiger Taekwondo for eight years now. Okay, big circles with your body. Taekwondo, it's a lot of kicking and punching. Um, in terms of a person who is in a chair like myself, 
um, who might not be might not necessarily be able to use their legs and kick. Um, there's different things we can do with our arms to replicate the the kicking motion. Ten. That's good. Relax. Relax. For um, for a kick, for example, like in, instead of kicking with my legs, I might just just punch with my arm or something like that. Or I might just like it for a, for a side kick with my legs, I might just take an elbow and put it out to the side. My name's Trevor and I'm a black belt in Taekwondo. My mom actually brought a flyer in um, that she found at work. Uh, she worked for WCB then and she found it on their bulletin board and brought it in and said, I think this would be good for you to do. And I've been, I, I had wanted to do a martial art being a kid, right? Uh, but with cerebral palsy, it was a little bit harder for me. So they found this and, and she signed me up uh, that year. Uh, when I was younger, when I first started, um, I was getting bullied a lot and I would just sit back and take it and, you know, um, and, and just do nothing about it, right? And so when she signed me up for Taekwondo, I gained a lot more confidence to confront my bullies and actually like put up a fight, you know, take a stand, that sort of thing, and not just, again, in a physical sense where I'm ready to fight, but just by confronting them and not standing back. Beginner level of Taekwondo is a white belt. There are 10 different um, color belts that you have to go through. I am currently a green belt, which is about the middle. It's about, yeah, about halfway. Okay, two punches. Right? Ready and one. I've been involved with PSA for over 20 years. So I've done many, many, many programs Ready, through them. High block and one. I'm normally a, a pretty active person as it is. Just being able to get out of the house, being being able to do something with with people. Okay. Okay. Sounds and good. even maybe practice it. I think it's important for programs like this to exist because it gives um, you know disabled people, handicapped people, uh, a way to kind of get out again, like me, get strong, get confident. As a kid coming into this, um, you know, I didn't have a lot of friends. I didn't know how to make friends. And so having other programs like that help other kids, uh, you know, learn that type of social aspect. Outside block, outside block. Six. Kick. Seven. Good. Okay. I've come pretty far in a lot more ways than just the physical. Uh, you know, it just grew into other things, other aspects of my life, uh, getting confident and making friends, uh, learning to accept me for who I am. Ten. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. On Monday nights, people gather at the Acceptance and Commitment Therapy Center to play wheelchair floor hockey. It's a um, very accessible gym that uh, all of the athletes are able to easily get here from their bus and use the entire facility very well. Matthew Day is a volunteer with the Paralympic Sports Association, but he comes for the fun just as much as anyone else. I've been volunteering here for about eight years. To be honest, I don't really look at it as volunteering. I come out because I have a ton of fun. Kind of like I'm on the team and I just get to like hang out with some uh, friends that I've made over the years being here for so long. So it's more fun than anything. Once the gym opens to us at six o'clock, then we kind of come in and um, one by one, we like everyone has different needs or, or help. So anything from giving the odd person a stick to uh, having to attach some of the hockey sticks to their some wheelchairs uh, or having, having a wheelchair transfer uh, some athletes into uh, more athletic wheelchairs instead of their their day to day so everyone has a little bit different uh, different need but we just make sure that all their needs are met and everyone is good to go all right guys My name is Neil and I'm here playing my annual wheelchair floor hockey. 
it's a good it's good exercise it, it, I enjoy I enjoy it gets gets me out of the house uh, it can be very difficult at times you, you just got to try and, and figure it out as, as you play I try to keep it on my if, if I need to use both of my hands to push my chair I'll, I'll try and keep it the stick on my lap um, or I can I can hold it with my one hand as I'm pushing if if I have to but uh, I, I, dro I dropped a stick uh, on occasion, so it, it, like I say, it can be very challenging at times. You guys need your real goalie back. Nobody here likes losing, that's for sure. <laughs> There's some history between some of these uh, some of these players, and uh, it's but it's all good fun. It's not nothing too serious. It's just a good time. Hey Willie, here we go. Oh, nice pass, right to Wade. There we go. Oh, 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 oh. Nice pass. The hardest part about floor hockey is, I mean, like I said, I, I grew up playing ice hockey, and it, it's it's a difficult sport in general. Uh, but when you're in the wheelchair, you have to like use your arms to motor around and move around. Uh, you also have to use those same arms to shoot and stick handle and and pass to where your your team is. Um, and as well as your your head, you have to be looking up because the wheelchairs don't stop so quick, and you can run into people. And it's very technical. Whoa, that's it. Coming out to floor hockey is, is, is a great way to be active, um, especially if you if you can't get out in in, in winter. It's it can be very difficult for, for people who are disabled to get exercise, and I this is a very yeah, good way to, of getting ex exercise. Oh, I I believe I've I've improved a lot with my my stick handling, my passing. <laughs> I think it's super important for everyone to be able to have an option to go out and do something, to have groups or clubs or activities and, and just have some activity that we can all get out and, like I said, get you out of the house and it gets people active and also it makes, there's a lot of friendships that have been made here over the years that uh, might not have been made otherwise. How was good game? Good job, Will. Hard fought. Yeah, it was good. I really hope that, um, you know, through exposure like this, through Facebook groups, you know, through PSA, um, they kind of spread the word, um, you know, and, and people start to realize that we're all the same. Um, and I hope that uh, other organizations like PSA decide, hey, you know what, we can also do something like this. And, and we grow as a community just through exposure. There's not a lot of opportunity for our son and, and because we'll have a tournament and because there might be most valuable player and you know the, the player who gives his most for example, Caleb has won that and you know he tries to say that you know it's, it's not a big deal but you know that it's a big deal. The PSA does a great job because if it weren't for organizations like the PSA, people like me or younger people that you were in the pool with wouldn't have the opportunity to to be like to act or to move as normally as uh, the 99.9% .9 of the population that's not disabled. It doesn't matter what level of disability or if you have a, no disability, just being able to come out into the community, come out to a, a facility like this that everyone participates in, is you find, you're trying to teach your daughter that, you know, it doesn't matter how, you know, how the world looks at you and how it you know, labels you, you're part of the community, you're able to do anything and everything that you want to, and it's, it's great. Directed by Tamara Canu. Director of Photography, Tamara Canu. Camera Assistant, Karina Leslie. Sound Recordist, Michael Olson. Edited by Tamara Canu. Production Assistant, Karina Leslie. Special thanks to the Paralympic Sports Association. Integrated Described Video Specialist, Simone Cupid. Regional Content Specialist, Jim Crisco. Graphics, Mike Smith. Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director of Production, Karen Nye. Director of Programming, Brian Perdue. 
VP Programming and Production, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2019, Accessible Media, Inc.